Hello there and welcome once again to the Train Aid HQ. My name is Nick and in today's video we are looking at the Level 4 Award in the Internal Quality Assurance of Assessment Processes and Practice, otherwise known as the IQA qualification and we are going to be investigating some of the most commonly asked questions in regards to the Level 4 IQA course. In regards to the assessment structure of this qualification, there are two uh, units. Uh, the first is an assignment and the second is a practical portfolio of evidence to demonstrate that you are an active and functioning IQA. In regards to unit one, we have uh, an assignment and the suggested word count here is 3,000 words. And unit two looks at your portfolio of IQA evidence demonstrating that you can use key documents such as a sample plan, a uh, tracking sheet, and also monitoring your two assessors. In regards to the qualification, you need to be monitoring two uh, assessors. These could be assessors, they could be trainers, they could be instructors, they could be teachers. So it's two uh, candidates who are working within an assessing or a teaching or training role, okay? They do need to be active uh, assessors and uh, teachers by example, but they will need to have access to learners in order for you uh, to complete your IQA qualification. In regards to uh, the awarding body, that is high field qualifications, here is an example of the certificate you'll receive at the end of your course. It is an electronic certificate uh, which will be emailed to you, of course. In terms of some of the key uh, points with this qualification, um, there are a range of electronic assignment templates for you to use um, on this course. It is an online uh, self-paced course uh, with no cutoff points or deadlines, of course. We do have a marking team that work to five working days. Uh, support is available um, over the phone, over Zoom, of course, with one of the team here at train eight and in terms of the qualification it's yours for life it does not expire so we are going to now investigate some of the most commonly asked questions that we receive in regards to the iqa qualification so as we know uh, the awarding body is high field qualifications it is an accredited course um, so it's off qual regulated and it is on the RQF framework. And once you've achieved this qualification, you're a fully qualified IQA, it's yours for life, and it does not expire as well. In terms of the, the qualification credits, there are 12 credits uh, to this qualification. Uh, the suggested uh, learning hours is 90 guided learning hours. So it's very much a self-paced course, and you can, of course, work uh, through both units just at your own pace as well. With that being said, uh, what is the most common uh, time frame for learners completing this qualification? Um, it, it takes uh, most learners between three to four months to gain uh, their IQA certificate, but of course you work through the units at your own pace as well. The minimum age uh, someone can embark on the, the IQA qualification is 19 years old. Okay, in terms of support, once again, uh, we are here um, in the Train Aid HQ, Monday to Friday, 9 uh, to 5, and we are available, of course, um, over the phone uh, to answer any questions about your assignment and also your Unit 2 portfolio as well. We do have a, a marking team that do work to five working days, and you can send in uh, your assignments and also your portfolio as much as you like. So there are no hidden costs. Uh, with our courses and we're here to support you every step of the way so do send in uh, your portfolio as many times as you wish. Um, in terms of the entry requirements you will need to be working within a position where you can monitor two candidates who are currently working within an assessing teaching or training role so there has to be uh, two assessors or teachers trainers that are established within their role okay and are actively teaching training and also assessing so it's going to be very important uh, for unit two in terms of the next question do i need to be a qualified assessor before i begin the iqa qualification 
Well, that's a very good question. And the answer is no, you do not need to gain the level three carver first in order to do your IQA qualification. You can go straight onto the IQA course. Um, however, it is an advantage, okay, to become an assessor first. And also the two candidates that you are monitoring might be in an assessing role anyway. So as long as you're comfortable with providing them uh, feedback on best practice uh, with assessing, then that's absolutely fine there. But of course, you can go straight on to uh, the IQA qualification. Uh, can I get funding for this course? No. However, we do offer uh, lots of flexible payment plan options as well. So do have a look on our website and also do give us a call and we can have a chat about the different options there. Okay, in terms of resources, what resources will I receive? So when you do enrol onto the IQA course, you will get a hard copy uh, textbook, and this is the principles and practices of quality assurance, okay? Otherwise known as the IQA uh, textbook by Anne Gravel. So this is going to be very useful in terms of completing your assignment, which is unit one. So you receive a hard copy textbook um, along with um, electronic assignment support, PDF slides, uh, video guides, portfolio examples, and also IQA templates. So you receive a bundle of different resources and templates to guide you through those two units as well. One of the most common questions is what does unit one uh, involve what does the assignment uh, investigate so unit one is the suggested word count is 3,000 words and you have to um, investigate the functions the roles and responsibilities of an IQA so it's investigating uh, what an IQA does okay and in terms of your assignment of course you can write in the first or the third person, we encourage you to either reflect on your current or your future IQA role there. But the only uh, source of information that you need to complete unit one is the IQA textbook as well. In terms of the uh, suggested word count, it is between three to 4,000 words. Uh, you only need to reference the Anne Gravel's textbook. You can, of course, use a variety of other sources, such as textbooks, websites, and journals, but the IQA textbook is the only source of information uh, that you require. If uh, you need to make any corrections, so if you submit your assignments and the marketing team do give you developmental feedback, uh, don't worry. Uh, you can submit the, the, the changes to your assignments uh, and resubmit that to the marketing team who will uh, provide you with uh, some feedback there. And they'll let you know if you've met the, the pass criteria and then you can move on to unit two. Um, another question is, are there any additional fees uh, with the resubmission of work. Well, there's there's no uh, additional fees or hidden costs here. You can send in your assignment uh, to us to receive some formative feedback or send it in to us when the assignment is fully complete. So after unit one, you'll move on to unit two. Now, unit two is demonstrating that you are an active and functioning IQA. This is where you need to put uh, a portfolio of evidence together to demonstrate uh, that you're an active and functioning IQA. So here is an example of the evidence checklist for unit two. As you can see, you will need to submit your CV, a personal profile, and also certificates. You also need to produce a portfolio, a portfolio of evidence here um, with information about the two assessors that you are monitoring. Uh, you also need to complete uh, an observation plan, uh, a meeting plan, standardisation plan, a uh, sample plan, just to name a few of the documents. You might already be familiar with the likes of a meeting plan and an observation plan uh, within your company. But if you don't, don't worry. Uh, TrainAid does provide you with examples, uh, templates, exemplars for you to use as well. So you can uh, use your own organisation's uh, framework and submit those as evidence or if you are perhaps uh, working on an observation plan for the first time, that's absolutely fine. And you can submit uh, your completed observation plan to us to review. 
So in terms of unit two, you have to, to monitor, you have to provide feedback uh, to two assessors, okay? And in terms of how do I store uh, my unit two portfolio? So the unit two portfolio is saved electronically by you and you can send in your evidence to us uh, to receive feedback at any point as well, okay? So of course you can use uh, your own systems paperwork and also templates, that's absolutely fine. And in terms of how many learners uh, does each assessor need to be monitoring? Okay, so that is very important. So each of your two assessors need to be monitoring uh, a minimum of two learners each, okay? This is going to be very important because you will need uh, to examine, for example, uh, the written feedback from uh, the assessors to the learner. So this could be sampling uh, the assessor's marking of the learner work. In terms of the IQA observation, so this is where you'll need to monitor and observe um, each of your assessors in their assessing or teaching role. In terms of the IQA qualification, um, a qualified IQA will need to observe one of your observations. Okay, so that is very important. But what does the IQA observation involve? So to complete the IQA qualification, you will need to be uh, observed um, in terms of each of your assessors in their assessing or teaching role. So the IQA observation will involve uh, the IQA um, observing um, each assessor, okay? So just to see them uh, briefing um, the, the learner or candidate, and it's also involving observing the assessor during the activity as well, okay? Just to make sure that they're objective. And also watching the assessor debriefing the learner after the assessment as well. You as the, the IQA will be uh, monitoring each assessor and providing them with feedback. So in terms of typical assessments, uh, we've seen perhaps a one-to-one -one, um, assessment between uh, the assessor and the learner. We've also seen um, uh, IQAs perhaps observe a teacher delivering a teaching or training session as well. So this observation is very much open to the qualification, the course or training um, that you are going to be monitoring as well. So one of the key questions is, um, what do I do if I do not know uh, of a qualified IQA? Okay, so obviously you will need to be observed by a qualified IQA, but if you don't know someone who can observe you, don't worry. Uh, one of the uh, team from TrainAid uh, can observe you, okay? They'll write up an observation report and also to complete a professional discussion with you as well. So if you haven't got a, a qualified IQA, don't worry. Uh, someone from the train aid team can help you with this. Another key question is, can I complete the IQA qualification if my two assessors are perhaps in different locations or could I um, observe my assessors remotely? So that's absolutely fine. So if you are perhaps in a different location from your two assessors or trainers, you can, of course, um, perhaps observe them over Teams or Zoom or a different uh, remote platform as well. So you can have uh, meetings, standardization meetings over Zoom or Teams, and you can, of course, record that um, as evidence towards your unit uh, to portfolio. OK, uh, what happens after the observation? OK, so once uh, you've been observed by a qualified IQA, you'll need to complete a professional discussion document. So this is very much where you are reflecting on your current um, IQA practice, looking at your strengths and also areas for development. The professional discussion is completed by you and this is very much the last element of the IQA qualification as well. One of the most common questions is, uh, after achieving the IQA course, uh, what positions and also job opportunities are available? Well, of course, uh, you'll be a fully qualified IQA, so you can become perhaps a, a freelance IQA, you can sample uh, different assessors' work, you can, of course, visit uh, different centres, so you can obviously uh, just go and investigate uh, and write up um, IQA reports uh, just looking at a team of assessors or trainers.
trainer. So you can be absolutely a freelance uh, IQA or you can be an in-house IQA uh, for your own company or organisation. You can work closely uh, with awarding bodies and also uh, you can issue certificates as well. Finally, what are the progression areas after the IQA qualification? So the next step is a level four certificate in leading the internal uh, quality assurance of assessment processes and practices. This is the lead IQA qualification. Uh, it's a bolt on unit uh, to the award. And this is where you'll be needing to, to monitor two IQAs. So it is the next step up um, from the awards. Okay. And that is where you need to be uh, just monitoring two uh, qualified IQAs and ensuring that standardization is being uh, kept um, in, in regards to those two qualified IQAs. Thank you very much for watching the video um, about the common questions with regards to the IQA course. Um, any questions, please get in contact with the team. Uh, please do call our office or uh, drop us an email uh, just with any course uh, inquiry as well. So thank you very much for watching uh, our video and we hope to see you on one of our IQA courses.